Raise that mic. It's a bit low. It's a little low. Make me feel so low. I'm gonna get copyright struck. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Ah, oh, too soon. Too soon. Ah. Uh, People now know that I love Stephen Wilson. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the Beyond Arrow stream today on this fine. 28th of August 2023. I hope you are having a wonderful week and will have a wonderful week ahead of you. Uh, my week has been, I've been tired, but uh, the F1 happened and I get a lot to talk about for the F1. I enjoy me some good F1 as well as a bunch of other topics. Uh, but I thought, you know, I've been doing this whole month. We'll be doing these uh, shorter one off games that have been entirely uh, PC games from my childhood of some kind. Let me introduce to you uh, this last one. Let's hop right into it. Let's see if I can get the timing just right. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> this one, hopefully it's not loud. It might be loud. I'm turning it down a little bit. It is probably going to be a bit loud. Oh my goodness. It's going to be generally that loud the entire time, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Uh, this is a game in the exact same uh, Macromedia Flash presenter engine as Bag and the Dragon that I played last week. But this one is probably the most obscure title that I think I own. Uh, this is a game called Evacuate! Exclamation mark from Windy Towers. A game that has an intro. It's very Australian, can you tell? And it's filled with fart jokes all over the place. I don't really know how to explain this game. Uh, but if I had to ex say this is this is a maths educational game, um, that's my old save. Uh, there are a bunch of setup things required to get this game to work. So number one, uh, my disc may be the only known existence of a disc of this game. Uh, number two, uh, uh, as in, like I've tried. You cannot find any presence of this game on the internet beyond two Reddit posts thinking they remembered it and someone name dropped it. Uh, and a US uh, Securities Commission report talking about that there's this game that exists. Um, <laughs> we start off with... Well, she's an aunt, I guess, but I don't know, I get super creeped out by mouths drawn like this. So there's something wrong with a pinky going on here. Lovely. Here you are, gorgeous. This is your surprise. I knitted it myself to keep you company. Take it now. Come on, don't be shy. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. Take it now. Yeah, the game doesn't continue if you don't take it. And then they lay you on with you a fart joke. Take some fresh air out in my roof garden before bed. I'm terrified. I, I oh, swear that there's no aspect ratio going on. Was, this you, game you. runs in 800 by 600. There's nothing you can do about it. That's right. Off you go. Never a moment's peace. Don't, don't, don't touch his big red nose. I'm allergic to you. I'm allergic to you. I'm allergic. I'm allergic. I'm allergic to you. I thought he was going for happy birthday there. I'm allergic to you. I'm allergic to you. Like I thought he was going for that, but sure. Touch the nose, and the quick time video kicks in. And uh, this game decides to be all trippy for a bit. Also, upskirt shot.
Ah, ah. Are you okay, human? My name is Arby. But call me number one. LB is number two. <laughs> Nonsense. I'm number one. I'm one. I am. No, I am one. I don't think you realistically assess the situation. You can't count. That's your I am one number one. Is one. Whatever. Whatever. But you're, you're number, number three. three. Number three? You've shrunk. You're half the size you were. You won't grow back until evacuate is put together again. We'll need to call in a few favours from our old friends. We need Whoopi to hold the vax. We need Tech Talk to navigate. Now start looking. All right, we need to collect the vax and we need to somehow find Tech Talk and Whoopi. This is the. Here's Tech Talk. Okay, there's Tech Talk in one go. Let's find Whoopi before number three. Yes, in one go. go. And then you ready? Uh, there's there's Whoopi right there. Uh, like yeah, okay, sure. What was this objective? <laughs> You wave your mouse all over the place. Hot, 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 hot. Keeps telling you that you're hot. On fire. Hey, Whoopstar buddy, what happened? I saw a vac flying here. I, I sucked it up and then bang, the door closed and rooms are dry. I start spinning me out. So you have a vac already. Brilliant. Whoopi, meet number three. Hello, happy to meet you. I will be pleased to hold the vax as you find them. It gives me something to do other than sitting around on a couch waiting for some bum to sit. Ugh. What do you have so far? <laughs> oh, excuse me, I, I must interrupt. I'd like to show you my inner depths. I don't object to objects, as you can see, I like them. Shapes are wonderful, we. If you like, I can debrief you. No, 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 keep your pants on. <laughs> Just take a closer click. <laughs> so pretty much the structure of this game is that it's a collection of I'll I'll look at this in a moment. Number three, start looking for the rest. Here we go. An all-night back marathon. The finish line is dawn. The winner will be now that's a secret. I want to keep everything that has been said in mind. There's a race to collect all the vax. We needed to find tech talk and whoopee and we just immediately do uh basically this game is just like it's a mini game collection you play a bunch of mini games they're all sort of math related um sort of, of the vax has been collected. you'll collect the vax as you go throughout the game uh, a reward for doing each puzzle uh the vax themselves all constitute that thing that you clicked on at the end uh but the kind of fun part is that uh they have got these little videos where um they show like, oh, okay, you can make the shape and they'll describe what the shape is. But uh, interestingly, yeah, you can click print and you can actually print off these shapes. And uh, yeah, if you've got a printer, you can you can print off every single bit and uh, build your own, evacuate the, the machine that we built. A talk is a special scuttler uh, who is attached to the top of evacuate also i don't know why there's a evacuate um, and your navigator i don't know why they need a explanation for tech talk but yeah uh as you go throughout the game you'll collect all these other ones and yeah you can print them all out and do cool stuff with them so yep uh there's nothing else to really do or collect but you're basically clicking around each scene uh finding just bizarre things happen A lot of this game just kind of happens, and it's a bit What's bizarre. Up, number three? Never seen a scuttler before? I guess not. Great Aunt Dementia invites them to spend their scuttlebutt holidays here on Earth. They do have some strange customs. So, anyway, let's get into a game. Um, this is Wacky, probably the first game. Let's look at the help. help to create babies, whack a scuttler with a flip-flop. I will tell you how many babies uh, we call them thongs. Thank you very much. The number on it's an Australian game. Shows how I should know better. It will make with each whack. Keep whacking until enough babies have been made. When you think you have enough babies, 
click on the arrow on the vacuum hose. If you are correct, the vacuum hose will work. Sort the babies onto the pillows. Make sure each pillow has the same amount of babies. If you need to change babies to another pillow, click on the arrow. Babies will be sucked up. If you need thinking time, turn the arrow so it points to the side. When the babies are sorted equally between the pillows, they will start their nap. Yeah, so uh, you could probably, you know, smell the the math minigame out of this is, uh, you know, figuring out, you know, like, okay, how many times do I have to hit things that give me two in order that I get six babies? And then you need to divide it between two pillows and sure, okay. Uh, there's five rounds. A lot of these minigames have five rounds, but sometimes they have, a, I'm not hitting the twos, there's going to be like an eight that shows up. Oh wow, they really want me to hit the twos. Okay, count them. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. There we go. Wow. Okay. Um. But yeah, this, uh, this game is... Bizarre. It's very strange. And, uh... Yeah, at the end of the day as well, I had never beaten it because it's a little clunky. It's... It's got a lot of, like, script errors and just things that are just like, this needs to be caught. This needs to be caught before this is put into a uh, release product. Come on, give me another seven. Give me another seven. There it is. Saves my time. Um, so, yeah, trick. Number one, uh, finding a copy of this game. It doesn't exist. Uh, maybe if I can find some discs to, or disc rippers, you know, maybe I can find a place somewhere in the world, uh, for that to exist. But until then, I don't know, I might be the only person on earth who has this game. Uh, yeah, number two, it never installed. Even back in the day, I used to run this by going into the disc and trying to find the evacuate.exe, uh, and running off that. Uh, which leads into problem number... Also, there is no installer on disk. There is a Mac... I think there is a script file. But it's got binary in it, so it's not a script. It must be an executable. It might be a Mac-based one, because this game is for Mac as well. But on Windows, nah. Uh, there's no QuickTime installer regardless. So no matter, you know, whether I did find, you know, the... I've kind of committed to hitting the sixes now. Um, even if I commit to, you know, somehow... Finding an installer. It's not particularly worth it to, you know, to do that. So the easiest thing is copy all the files into your home direct or it, not into your home, but just like onto your computer and just run it from there. Uh, that is also important for problem number two. And I never even realized this as a kid. Uh, you, you saw how I had a previous save. Yeah, as a kid, I used to think this game just never saved. I was like, oh, why do you got to put down your name if it never saves? Um, and so I, I'd get so far into the game and then I'd have to turn it off and then I would lose all my progress. Uh, fortunately, also, yep, yeah, that's five rounds. That's basically perfect score. I, I don't know how you can fail it. So when the vac appears after a minigame, you click on it and then he makes a comment about how it smells or something. Something like that. Also, wow, fractions. But yeah, you can click on this and you get to see like how they build this. Uh, so yeah, so copy all the files onto your computer. Uh, also, yeah, since it can't save, I realized these things are pretty cool, by the way. I used to kind of just like make them a lot in primary school. You can do this with any like kind of two pieces of paper, but if it's colored on one side, it looks prettier. Um... Hello, sir. Oh, Plus, oh my gosh, you? I'll just constantly be interrupted. With something. Ooh, yes. ah, ah, ah. Was the lift? He's such a gutless nobody. We want to go up. Over my dead body. If you insist, get down, ghost. Never. Get down. Not well, there are vax left in the basement. Oh, we'd better go and find them. So this is what two Reddit posts were talking about. This night guy. You should 
be exploring this floor. They got freaked out by this night guy. And they probably were freaked out by a lot of other things in this game. But uh, basically what this knight is doing is that you need to keep going up one floor at a time. And this knight is basically telling you to bugger off and find all the, the vax on the floor. Which is a big, you know... Also, why has he got a... You know... Bit of a load going on. Uh, but that's a big tell that basically go, yeah, there's no need to backtrack at all in this game. Despite the fact that you can keep going down floors, there is a point where you'll kind of get a bit stuck, and then it's like, yeah, nah, it's it's just because the game doesn't telegraph how to continue very well. It's not because you missed anything. Oh, I'm hungry. Thank you, thank you, Australian voice acting. How many what fart jokes are we dealing with? For? Yeah, okay. So, pretty much what they want to teach you, and this is another mechanic, is uh, put a donut on that thing and you'll play Plop Shop, the minigame. But this is the full version right now. Here at the Plop Shop, we bake delicious dragon food. Gaza always phones in his order to get plops, plop sticks, or a pack of plops, click on the dice. Or swap button. One pack of plop to ten plop sticks. One plop stick to ten plops. Ten plops to one plop stick. Ten plop sticks to one pack of plop. If you have too many, use the dump button. When you're sure the order is correct, click on the bell to send it down to Gaza in the cellar. He needs plops to create gas, which powers the building. If he goes hungry, it gets cold and dark. This minigame takes forever. Uh, it's effectively a, a numeracy challenge where basically uh, you just have to also... It makes a sound every time I click on anything in this, by the way. You can swap the packs for 10 sticks, drag them out, swap a stick for the donuts. I think we're good. It doesn't matter what's in your swap parts, uh, you know, you don't have to dump it as long as it's just in the vats. Uh, the vats, sorry. Click the send and uh, you'll have Gaz to tell you whether you did it okay. Oh, I like it. You're doing things right. Thank you. So, so anyway, so the reason why I say copy the game files onto your computer is because it writes a save directly, like, relatively next to the executable. And, uh... Also, yeah, roll or die and you just get more stuff. You know, just cuz. Uh, I'm gonna need to make one pack, so, yep. Um, that meant as a kid, I would never realize that the game, you know, wasn't saving because it silently likes to continue if uh, it can't save because you're trying to run the executable from the disc itself. Uh, nothing in the readme ever describes this, they just describe installing, so it's like, yeah, okay. Me as a kid, confused. Uh, you'll also need quick time uh, 6, but 7 works. Seems to work, so just find quick time 7 on the Apple website. And then other than that, I think it works. It's doing the Adobe, you know, presenter thing, so uh, the window is in the center of the screen uh, with no scaling, so you might change your screen resolution as well if you're going to play this, but... Uh, otherwise, it's pretty alright. Also, do not hit the Windows key. The game will proceed to not play any audio whatsoever from there on out. Or sometimes it plays audio, but it, you lose it all, basically. Alt-Tab, okay. But the Windows key is a no-go. I think that's everything. Um, follow along, you'll figure out how this game works. Uh, where did I pick this up? It was probably from a book fair or something. I used to be that kind of kid who never bought books at a book fair. I had terrible experiences reading books. I'm not talking about paper cuts, I'm talking about like weird books that like I swear someone, like no one vetted this and suddenly me as a, like a young kid is reading some rather traumatizing things. So anytime there'd be a book fair I'd be super interested in just like a game, a piece of software. I don't exactly know what allured me into this one. Uh, if I had to say maybe I really did dig 
uh, like 3D graphics just in general. I thought, you know, they were the coolest and nothing that wasn't 3D graphics. Uh, sorry, if it was 3D graphics, it had to be decent. Now, there's not a lot of 3D graphics in this game in the end, isn't there? You got the characters of RB and LB. Uh, I guess they're 3D rendered. They show up a bit, sure. So it's a lot better when you can roll the dice on the, uh... On the pack slide. The pack side, if you will. Uh, let me just count. I'm pretty sure that's... F yeah, we're good there. But it kind of sucks when you have to roll extra and then you're like, Oh, now i got to swap one. One bit there. Dump... Dump that. I, I hope I don't get demonetized purely by the... The fart noises. Which I will have to be doing quite a bit. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, 519, yep, sure. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess I just somehow got into acquisition of this and uh, I played it a bit, but I never did beat it. Um, I was weirded out by it, though, and I never had a huge desire to fully beat it. But now, I guess, is that period of catharsis for me where it's like, you know, let's. Let's fully document this one, because I, like, I don't know, I feel like I was the first person to YouTube play through Toy Story 2. Uh, although I think people played it on, you know, had like Game Facts guides and stuff for it. Um, so now maybe here I am, the first person ever documenting the existence of a game called Evacuate. Some guy's gonna Google it, there you go. You're welcome, but I, I, I don't know like this is something that people made and as much as like maybe I'll be a bit critical about parts of it uh, Where I could definitely say, you know, this minigame takes forever. There's so much dragging and dropping with this minigame in particular um, You know like at the end of the day like it. You're doing things right. You know, it's generally all right. Oh, do you like how they did a five hunt? They drew it with the pack of plops some guy some guys a genius for thinking that one up and light, two vital things for success, and there is a fact. Whenever Gazer is hungry, find these vents and plops. They'll transport you to the lift and plop your feeder on that level. Got that? Or use them to get to the lift at any time. Here's a joke. What do dragons eat? Raw food! <laughs> Yes, let's get on with it, shall we? We have to find the Vax, not Cobbler. I heard that. Okay, sure. There's a lot of, like, weird things if you just click on everything. Oh, I'm hungry. Feed me. Oh, I'm hungry. I do like him, though. He's cool. Now the heat is on. So we got we got, we got a has been just the Pentagon. This is literally just the thing you can slap it on your you know, evacuate like big base going on. Uh, but yeah, I think that's everything on this floor. At last, we're getting somewhere. We'll give it a go. So we got six floors. Nothing in this building works like it should. This lift is always stuffed. So are you. Okay. Movement impossible. Wonky wires. Unfit for travel. Fix the wiring. I wonder what they want me to do. Unfit for travel. Fix. Okay. So uh, this is a very very small mini game. You can click on this guy and it keeps zapping him, and you can do the fun thing where you click like ten times quickly, and it just has to play the animation like constantly. Like my mouse is nowhere near him now. Uh, but yeah, how you do this is that there is a arithmetic sequence. Figure out what number makes both. You probably only need to look at one of these anyways. Like, you can just tell that 8 is missing here. Also, your scores are out of 80. Also, your scores don't appear anywhere in this one. I don't think they ever do. It's super quick. It just kind of happens, but sure. Yeah, there's no, well, I was going to say there's no repeat games, but otherwise you have to do this puzzle every time you want the lift to go anywhere, 
just one puzzle. You don't have to keep doing it. And that that pack of plops one, you have to use that the first time you ever move between a floor. I don't know why they get you to redo that one so many times, but sure, you know, okay, I'll accept it. Other than that, though, every game is somewhat different in this one. So, hey, you know, if you think something's a bit boring, you know, it's only going to be there for a moment. They're all, yeah, they're all mildly math sainted. No, We're, doing, why is six We're doing the six seven, afraid of seven thing. Because seven, eight, nine. <laughs> <laughs> First floor, welcome to the lobby. Okay, out we go. And then they're in the pram for some reason. This is fast, cheap transport, so we won't have to walk. Where's my mama? I want my mama. You're dribbling, Abby. Stop being so babyish. No calls to my apartment, thank you, Bellhop. A child is asleep upstairs. So let me try and get the plot, by the way, because uh, this minigame takes forever, so... <laughs> oh, there he goes. Uh, also, uh, just understand the explanation of this game, because it just seems so arbitrary. Oh my! I'm having trouble coping. I'm just so worried about the little darlings. They've escaped into the lobby. I need your help to make play pens to hold the little monsters in. This spinner gives you the number of sides to use to make a play pen. Spin the spinner before each go. You can use the spin again button, but each time one point will be subtracted from your score. You can make a play pen wherever there are babies. Click on a line where you want a play pen side to appear. If you join it onto an existing play pen, Click on each side of the new playpen. Try to contain as many babies inside the playpen as possible. More babies and a greater area equals more points. If you want to undo a side, re-click on the line. When you have finished the playpen, click on the go button to lock the babies in. Yeah, okay. Basically how this game works is just... You draw the shapes and you hit go. Uh, you'll probably end up drawing the same state, uh, blah, the same shapes over and over again. Uh, so like whenever I do a seven, you like how I just wandered straight out as well. Or a six, I'll probably do this. They don't have to be connecting in any way. But you're, like, when you're told to draw a six, you have to draw a shape that fits six. Like, oh sorry, that has six sides, like that's it. Um, if you get an eight, it's like, cool, you can do this, like, crazy wide one. But it's like, it seems sort of aimless, because, like, what's the fail state in this? And the answer is, not really, there's, there's no real fail state. Uh, the thing that, I guess, gets kind of annoying is having to, like, click on the individual sides. And occasionally, uh, the render just seems to fail and will just draw a line permanently in a spot, even after you've unclicked it. It'll just do that, you know. And then you see, it just wanders out. It's kind of annoying. Uh, but yeah, so let me try and frame the plot for this game. So you have gone to visit your aunt Dementia. As, as in, it's with an S, not the T, so it's not the medical condition. I think. Maybe. Uh, for some odd reason, I don't think she's your real aunt. I think. Uh... In, in turn, what, what's, what happens next? You just, I don't know, you, you, you lay a big one on her. You fart real loud. She's like, ah, go onto the roof garden before you go to bed. And then on there, you just magically activate a thing. Is there someone who's not in the area? Oh, there's this tiny guy. Which, by the way, you like how I draw, drew an eight and a seven. It's like you can't fit this guy because there's no contiguous space. There you go. Time to get some rest. Hey, what's the 
wreck it. Shut up, pea brain. No. Oh, that's right. You gotta do it again. You gotta do it three times. And this is probably where the interest in this game starts to wane uh, immensely. Although I will safely say, this is probably the worst of all the games in this one. Uh, because there's not really a time challenge, nor do I feel like I'm particularly learning anything. Maybe it's like, oh, you know, like, it's got eight sides. You know, how many sides can I draw a shape? But inevitably, you're going to be drawing the same shapes over and over again and your only goal is to fit all the babies like at some point you know am i hearing a click noise am i going insane there's a click noise in this game as well the sound effect has where they're clicking <laughs> come on <laughs> I don't think there's as many babies in this one, and it potentially makes it seem like it's harder, but it's not. But yeah, oh, it's so aggravating. So you go onto the rooftop garden, there's a thing who's like, don't touch me, I'm scared, or something like that, and then you touch him, and then suddenly he bends reality, he makes your stuffed doll come to life for some reason. You are now shorter, and you now have to rebuild him in a race before sunset. Um, also, all of these weird monsters are here just because they're on vacation. All of them. Uh, oh, you see what I mean there? It's just casually drawn a line. What a relief. The babies are secure. Dead again. Unfortunately, this one's only got three uh, levels. You don't have to do five, because it would be an absolute pain if you had to do five. Uh, this one, I guess there's also toys involved. You're just going to make sure that... Oops. Can't have him in there. Just got to make sure it's got the toys. That's about it. Uh, nothing too deep. Just, yeah, you wrap them up and... Go for it. So, I'll probably rank all of these. Uh, the plop shop one is kind of annoying. The... The slapping babies with a... Uh, a flip-flop, as they said. It's kind of in the middle of how the games are in this one. Um, some of them get a bit more okay. Some of them. I'll let you be the judge. Uh, but I thought, I thought this would be the most appropriate of the, uh... The, <laughs> the obscure PC games that I own. Uh... Because it's, it is probably the most obscure one. I, I don't think I own anything else that is as lesser documented on the internet as this game. And perhaps it's because it's Australian made, perhaps it's educational, perhaps it's because it's on PC. Um, Thank you. They're but, all safe as secrets now. Oh, there we go. But it is super bizarre. I have to tell you. What is it? I'm number one. I do not think so. Oh, there they go, so. The other facts won't be so easy to find. Oh, 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 oh. Also, uh, other tip if you play this game, uh, set your monitor refresh rate to 60 hertz. If it's higher than that, it's going to cause one of these games to absolutely take forever because for some odd reason, it's like. Divide the frame rate or something like that. Multiply the speed of this by like the frame rate or something, but then it's like, I don't know, it goes super slow as opposed to super fast. There's one thing that goes super fast and I can't control for that, so. That cat is dead. He's got X's for eyes. These puns don't really work the best, but also, it. This is probably part of the fun gross uh, gross outs of the game. Need to cough up some furballs. We'll put a flag. What an accent, out. by the way. A scuttler will show you where the furball should land. The furball may be less than, 
more than or in between the numbers on the flags. When you know what amount the uh, they pointed less for, than and more than incorrectly. It should have been the other way. Balls inside the cat's stomach. Click again if you want to change your selection. These will make one great big fur ball with a combined value of the three you've selected. Click on the outside of the cat, and when it coughs a fur ball up, it might hit a sculler. It's a pretty simple explanation, and I'd probably say this is one of the better ones, but it is also a little sloppy. Also, you can tell how Australian they are. Uh, the reason why I say it's sloppy is because they start off with these ones where it's just got to be greater than 14, and it's like, well, there are so many things that are greater than 14. Like, I just picked three random ones, but, like, they're probably greater than 14. And it counts. That's full points. Five rounds. We just keep going. Also, it's gross. Okay, it's gotta be less than 87. Oh boy, you just pick like the two lowest ones, or the three lowest ones, like... There you go, I can't count. Um... <laughs> but like, I don't have to think too deep about that. Once you get into the ranges, sure, you know, it starts to be a bit more targeted. Although usually all of these are just like some multiples of a, of a number. So here it's like between 60 and 90, so I'm just like... I don't know, I'll probably pick like, you know... These three. Like, the range is pretty decent. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know what's with this background or anything, but sure. What kind of cat is blue? Oh, greater than 66. Oh boy, I sure hope clicking the largest numbers doesn't just do it for me. Last round, then <laughs> you don't have to see a barfing cat ever again. Usually this one's got the t- Wow, I- I was gonna say usually it's got the tightest range, but... No. Also, he, he was covering the thing. I've had ones where it's like, it's within like 10, so there's actually a, a decently precise, like, set of numbers you have to pick. But nah, nah, they just went pretty easy on me. Sure. That cat is a basket case in its ninth life. At least. Well done, number three. It looks a lot happier now. Thank you. Oh. Well, <coughs> I, I, I will take the back, but I'll pass on the furball, thank you. There we go. One quarter of the wax has been collected. There we go. We got this pyramid. Check this out. You can make this little pyramid by folding it up like this. That's pretty cool. Nice. And it goes on top of his uh, sternum. Something like that. I don't know what that number means, the four. It's probably something to it. Uh, there is another game here. Ah! <laughs> Help! Help me deliver the mail on time. Use arrow keys on your keyboard to control my direction. Make me move over each letter to it's collect... It's Snake. It's Snake. You will see the letters in order on my body. When they're all collected, send me down the post office hole. Now... Make me move over each letterbox to deliver the letters. The letter closest to my head needs to be delivered first. If I crash into the walls or bump into myself, <laughs> you will have terrifying to scream. So uh this one's pretty simple. It's a snake. Uh but he does go moderately quick and not on a grid and you're going to get really annoyed at the second half when you've got all the the places you got to deliver to. And they're all stacked on top of each other. Although this one's probably not too bad, because I've got like three fives, so... Let's deliver this as fast as email. Yeah, it's probably not too bad. It's not too bad here. I've had some horrendous ones where it's like, they're all just like... Nearly stacked on each other. Also, ugh, he looks at me. Stop it. I don't like it. So again, like... You know, if I was learning stuff from this, it's like, I'm trying to pick, like, what would the age range be? And I feel like this would be great for, like, five or six-year-olds, maybe. Because the the concepts are, you know, sometimes very basic. Because, like, I, I, the problem with a game like this is that it does need to target one particular age range. Um, Let's deliver this as fast as email. So these have to be, like, decently, like... 
uh, you know, how would I say? Since these are fairly basic, like just trying to find what, oh, you see what I mean? Um, since this is just like match the, the number, sure, okay. But I feel like, you know, teaching kids about like ranges and stuff, and they gotta like add three numbers. I don't know, I'd probably say like six or seven, actually. I don't know, it's probably about that point. Uh, this one's only got three rounds, so don't worry, this one doesn't go on for too long either. Oh, do you like that one? Speedrun pickup. Where's my evacuate speedrun? Game starts when you, uh... Name your profile and ends when you, uh, reach the final cutscene. How about that? Wow, he really takes his time. Snail mail days are over. I mean, I guess email was a new thing. But, yeah, you see what I mean? It's like, I gotta get the seven, and then I gotta somehow, like, just scooch past, and then I gotta get to another three, and then I gotta get to a fight. Like, it gets kind of awkward. Also, you can, you can move back on yourself, and not just, like, as in you go around a circle, as in you can literally... Make a U-turn and hit yourself. Well, there you go. I'm a god, apparently. And he turned into a plane. He turned into a bomber jet. That vac went air express to my inner depths. No stamp required. There you go. Three tenths of the vax has been collected. Look at that, three tenths. So this is a dodecagon. A dodecagon? A dodecagon is 12. This is just regular decagon. Gets you thinking. I used to say, uh, truncated, truncated pentatetrahedron all the time. It's weird that it's pentagonal. It's a very funky shape, but sure. So, do you work here much? No, m mostly I, I look out the window. <laughs> How can I ha Hello? Okay, sure. Uh, but we're- oh. We're we not done. Oh, because we're gonna, we're gonna put, the, put the, the thing and then we're gonna do this game again. It's the same game, it's just one level. But it's like, it's no harder, it's no different, so... Why do you make me suffer? Why do you ha make me have to, you know... Go, yeah, okay, put that on there, da da da. You know, it keeps going, so... Yeah. So as a, um, as a sort of retrospective over the whole, uh, this whole month of me playing these, like, one-off PC titles, I, I feel like there is a degree of, like, how much did these games really influence me or stick by me? This one, like, playing it again, it's like, yeah, I could, I could remember this game. But I think it's because, like... I could, well, actually, I couldn't remember many of the mini-games. I just remember the, the, the stuffed guy making terrible jokes and sounding like, uh... Um... I, I will just say very strong Australian on that one. Um... Oh my goodness, wow. It's just, it's just a lot of fart noises that you're gonna hear forever, aren't you? Uh... Yeah, it's very. Mm. I'm trying. I'm trying to picture it in my head, but I don't think I could really say this game left too much of an impact on me. Uh, and maybe that is perhaps the reason why it's very forgotten. This lift should be going up, not playing up. Actually, this lift goes like a rocket. It just needs fixing. Oh my gosh. Okay. So yes, this mini game again, but it's literally drag one thing and then you're good again. So, uh, but yeah, I feel like some of these games left more of an impact on me. I really did enjoy uh, FIFA a lot more as a kid. Maybe it's because it's probably the only one of these things that's like an actual game. Oh, this is the worst one as well. Nine, none. They were all copycats. <laughs> I was expecting a joke. Second floor, farm apartment. 
farm apartment? Till the soil? Oh yeah, also some of the videos don't render. Yeah, some of the videos just don't render. Uh, but yeah, your your game of choice is click on that sheep and then uh oh he nearly comes at you. I'm your best friend, so we'll work together on this one. Move all the sheep from this room to do, this room. Do the Wellingtons have faces in the bottom? What? Use me to click a sheep to move that woolly bleater into the passage. <laughs> Only a set number of sheep can go into a passage at any one time. Before you can get all the sheep into the bottom room, you may have to move some up to the top again. Uh, this is probably one of the most basic games. And, uh, you know, we'll get that. Enjoy the, the, uh, the sheep sound effects. Basically, you need to perfectly move the top to the bottom. Uh, that involves almost always one singular go back up to the top. But it doesn't matter which sheep you click, it's like, okay, you're just moving three to the bottom. And then basically, yeah, just, just wait and watch until this is, like, a multiple of that. And then you're fine. And if it's not, then you just move something back. And that's it. That's it. Do it five times and, uh, hope for the best. Good dog. Also, I don't know what's the, uh, layout of this building. She seems to have a door that goes straight to the lawn. Oh, that sheep took a Yui, didn't he? Yeah, I, I'm expecting this game might, like, just break at some point. It fortunately... Auto saves. Uh. But, uh, yeah, if, if it dies, it's like, oh, okay. This game will just break if you look at it funny. We'll just say that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I guess I probably pointed out all the, uh, educational titles a bit more than the, uh, than the actual, like, games as a kid. But I kind of wanted to just highlight this period where, you know, n not that I only bought games that were educational, but I definitely bought a number of games that were educational. And I think there's other ones, like, uh, a lot of people will know, uh, Dr. Kawashima's Brain Age, or Brain Training if, uh, you're in Europe or Australia. Um... As like an example of like, oh, you know, like this is an educational game I bought. Uh, a lot of people have probably got games like that. Um, but yeah, this is probably like one of mine. It's not exactly the most endearing one, but it's probably the most emblematic one, which is... There's some kind of mathematical game going on here, but... Uh, you know, I don't have to think too much about this game. This game, the thinking is fairly minimal. I don't know. At least for the games that we, the mini games that we've come across so far, and it's not too long a game, so I'm not playing this over multiple streams. This is like, you know, we'll be done with this probably just past two hours. Especially when the games are just as long as this one. You know, it just happens. But I'm always curious, like, what kinds of games did people play uh, that were educational or were like just Kind of, I don't know, like, like, did anyone else, I mean, people probably did, but like, I don't know, I feel like I was a better student in school because I realized that, like, games were trying to get me to learn maths a bit more aggressively than, uh, well, like, I was like, man, you know, they're, sometimes they're not as fun as school, you know, some of these math games, who knows. Um, yeah, I don't really know what my point is. Point is these weird experiences and uh i think it kind of came at that point when like video games were sort of respected as being able to push learning and push like entertainment at the same time uh in the end it's like yeah you got kind of mishmashes like this where it's not particularly fancy it's got the actual level of quality of a flash game and that's expected oh my gosh i have to move another batch up because it's 13.
I don't exactly know how you can lose points in this one as well, but sure. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Also, I hope you've really gotten annoyed by the sheep noises. The best part is when this fifth and final level ends, you get basically the, the sound effect that has to be in every single Australian piece of software. I forget what's the name of this instrument, but it's like the, the, the springy thing that you, you put in your mouth or something. What a great joke. What a joke. I'm, I'm laughing to the extreme. <laughs> this was a circle! It's just a circle. Slap it on, it's a circle. Uh, we got another minigame, you just gotta touch the blueprint. Where we get a game called Blueprints. The scuttlers need somewhere special to live. Create the blueprints to build each scuttler a house. Make sure each house is different. To make the blueprints, first drag the blocks onto the grid and build a house. Uh, there is a height limit of four blocks. The blocks must stand next to each other. Now, copy the view of the building onto the plans by clicking the correct spaces on the small grids at the side. The animals are here to help. Click and hold them to see their point of view. Bird's eye view. Sheep's eye view. Worm's eye view. Add windows and doors as you please. When you think you have the correct plans for each view, click on the check button. This one awkwardly has like no hard aim because basically you just have to, you know, make a floor plan with four boxes. Uh, the example had five, but no, you really only have to use four. Then you basically just go, well, it's there, there. And there. Like, I don't even need to, like, use the Correct. view. You're quite the architect. I mean, it's probably because I've done this a bunch of times. Uh, they did say these have to be different shapes. I don't know if rotationally they need to be different shapes. But, like, you know, there's a lot of, like, easy ones you can do, like that one. Uh, and yeah, uh, doors and windows are completely optional, and you're not going to see right. them again for a while, We're so... Right. Okay, sure. Do 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 The bird plan is out. Oh, sorry, man. Well done. This is my first They're example of a non-perfect score, which you can easily just replay these and get a better score. But also, some of these have impossible scores. For example, that uh, that um, the the baby one, or the, the other baby one, the one with the pens is like. It's too reliant on random stuff to be able to get it quite right every time, so it's just like, eh, who cares? Well done. They're all correct. Look at that, I said this one was easy and then I got it wrong. That's how you know I'm just like half asleep right now. <laughs> Come on. There you go, draw a square. Oh, get it in there. Come on, there we go. At least it works. They're all right. That was it. That was the game. This is the best home away from home the scuttlers have ever had. Say thank you to number three. Thank you, number three. Yeah. I'll work my way out of this dump. Just wait and see. Two feet of the backs has been collected. So that was what? The cylinder? Okay, you ready for the... the how to build a cylinder, that's right, you roll it and hope you don't fold it. And then somehow, uh, bend the thing back up on the inside. Like, I, I, I get what they're trying to do, but, oh, it's a lot trickier to do in person, let me tell you that. So let's go to this room where this person just exists and is seeing this. No walls, no doors, no windows, and no floor. A mushroom! Uh why is there a tractor and a lawn just in here? Do we know? I don't know. 
I'm looking for, for reality in this. Other than, uh, the fridge is talking to me. Oh, it's been a long day. And I still have to milk the rabbits. <laughs> yeah, I'm going insane. You go click on this, and then suddenly you just get <laughs> egged in the face. Okay. The egg business is a delicate one, but we'll give you a crack at it. We're oh, there's a pun. Take a take a shot every time you hear a pun in this game. I swear. First, use the balance scale to arrange us in order from lightest to heaviest. To move us, click the one you want to move, and then click on where you want us to go. To move us to the ladder, click one of us, and then click on the ladder where you want us to. All right, it's blue, click yellow, red. Itself, not in the air. When you have placed all of us in our correct positions on the ladder, our weights will appear. Now you need to weigh the egg. Use us to balance the scale as each egg appears. Balance the scale with us. Eggs actly. This one is luck base. Literally, you'll measure someone and then you'll see, okay, that guy's the light guy. Because it didn't change very much. Oh, that guy's actually the light guy. Okay, sure. Let's get on with weighing these googies then. This one's probably one of the better ones, other than me literally watching a, a chicken's butt. Oh my gosh, I hope that's not just weighing one. I feel like the only way to particularly do this is to just know how much the scale tips depending on its weight. Watching that chicken just poop out an egg is just ugh. Okay, so I'm gonna go heavy. And I'm gonna go light. Okay, but you get you get judged on how many like swaps you do and I feel like In quite a bunch of cases it is impossible to know ahead of time Like that one. It's like I didn't get perfect points because it's just like how was I supposed to know that you weren't gonna use the heavy other than judging the weight Judging the way the scale tips I Probably prefer if it was just like a simple relative scale see that one. I guess yeah, sure. What a bizarre game, though, let me tell you that. I'd be concerned if an egg looks like that when when I get it. One last one, one last round. Here we go. See, now that's, that's how you do it. You go relative. I don't know, I don't know, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so tired. I... No, not over here. I'm not ready. <laughs> yeah, sure, okay. The vac is now in existence. Okay, sure, yeah, yeah. That is a very interesting shape. I get the down by clicking on me. Look at this thing, it's just Vax 7. Actually, all of these were numbered, weren't they? Yeah. That's how you know. Uh, this is a square pyramid. You fold it up, and then it will be a pyramid, and you slap it on his ear like that. Again, this is one where, like, I don't think you could... You could really, uh, hold the edges quite right. It's got these nice little rings as well. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's nifty. Um... So how about let's talk about some hardware news. Uh, we've got the, uh, the AMD Radeon RX 7700 XT and the 7800 XT. These are brand new GPUs that are being released, 
uh, September 9th, was it? I don't have the numbers off the top of my head. Uh, so I can't talk specifically about um, the uh, the specs, but they sort of looked like... I think at the end of the day, off the top of my head, they looked in line with NVIDIA's pricing. Which is a problem, because being in line with NVIDIA's pricing, especially at this point, well after NVIDIA has released the cards, is like, eh, it's a bit too little too late, and especially when people commonly complain the NVIDIA cards are too expensive. Uh, we get into this kind of period of like, you know, is it worth buying a graphics card right now? And the answer is... Mm, sort of, it depends on how much you really, really need it. Sort of depends on just, is there any alternative? Uh, and that's why I say, you know, if you really, really need it. If you don't need a graphics card, just, it's fine. You don't need RTX, you don't need DLSS, uh, you know, like, what's the one? DLSS Ray Reconstruction, although how neat it is, and also it does work on RTX 2000 cards. Um, but you don't, you don't really need it. It's only out for three games, and one of them is Portal. And it's also not out, it's out in a bit later. Uh, it does look really cool. I do really like, uh, the DLSS used for, like, a... A visual enhancement as opposed to, uh, just, um, like, uh, yeah, we, we know, we know what's going on here. Uh, instead of just, like, a frame rate thing, and especially, like, all the other DLSS features have always been, um, you know, trying to not compromise on the visuals too much, uh, while improving the performance and frame rate. This is the inverse, it's trying to drastically improve the performance, oh, sorry, the, the visuals. What sound does a very cold Oh my gosh. A number. <laughs> oh my goodness. Third floor, science apartment. Through they go. I and Stein. It's a brain probe. It gives me really good ideas. <laughs> we need one. You'll need a brain first. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of random things you can click on here. I'll tell you that. Uh, this is probably one of the worst games. It just takes time. Light needs to go through the camera to the flash. Position the transforming key over the next camera part. Add a shape that is different to the one before it. Change the shape, color, size, or thickness. This number will tell you how many attributes need to be different from the last shape. When you think the shape is correct, put the key back into place and see if the light goes through. If it doesn't, try again. When the light travels through all the shapes, a photograph is taken. Why? So that sounds simple enough. Attribute different. Uh, sure, okay. So, I'm literally just gonna make it red. This is the problem with this. It's like, okay, now I'm going to make it blue. Now I'm going to make it... Like, I, I, I'm gonna turn off my brain, I'm just gonna go... I'm doing the same change back and forth. Constantly. There's other, like, things you can do, but, like, why make it complex for yourself? And annoyingly, it is five rounds. It takes its time, this one. Um, so yeah, so... Anyway, this lets me rant about the, the AMD graphics card... Ooh, nearly caught myself out there. This lets me rant about the AMD graphics cards a bit more. Uh, ultimately, the end price... Or the... These are the the, uh, the long-awaited Navi uh, 32 chips. Uh, so their manufacturing process, they have the big one that they've got, the Navi 31. Uh, they've made, uh, yeah, sure, we'll do that. They've made the Navi 33, which is just the, uh, the 7600. Um, and, uh, that one's kind of neat, because it is just, like, a single monolithic, uh, die. Yeah, oh, is it triplets? I mean, it's on the same architecture, but I assume what it was is that they only used one, um, maybe they did use two. 
I don't, I don't know how exactly they did it, but uh, point is, is that these new ones are somewhere in between. Um, but they were having huge problems with the manufacturing and really trying to get it to work on the scale. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, if you try to make a graphics card and your process is rather expensive, you know. Okay, so it's got to be thin, small, and yeah, sure. And now we go back to the big blue sea. Yeah, you see how this game works? It's just like, okay, like I'm not particularly experimenting a ton. You don't have to. That's the, the catch. And you keep hearing fart noises, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the problem with like manufacturing a graphics card or really any kind of part. Is that if, you're, if your process of trying to make it costs so much, you're sort of gonna kind of have to go like, okay, well like, you know, the product costs a fair bit because it costs so much to research and development. But yeah, in the market, it's not particularly good to... Make your own shape to start. I like how it's like, make your own shape. Here I go. Yeah, if you go a little too fast in this, by the way, the, uh... The... Like, the game will just soft lock. You cannot seem to, like, put in any shape that seems to work. It will just... It will just give up. I don't exactly know how. So I'm taking my sweet time just making sure that... The dialogue is done before I particularly move on with things. Um, so yeah, so these two graphics cards have been announced for the prices of 450 US dollars and 500 US dollars. They pitch the competitors of the two cards uh, respectively as the um, the 4060 Ti uh, 16 gigabyte, which is a very interesting card to choose, but sure, okay, you know. Uh, and the, uh, the 4070 for the, uh, for the more expensive one. Now, the 4070, uh, in the US is 600 US dollars. Um, so it, you know, claiming that it's a decent bit better, like a 20%, you know, general improvement maybe in places, or maybe it's like 10%, for a cheaper cost, is like, yeah, you know, that's, that's a, a decent gain. And AMD is particularly good at always emphasizing that, uh, usually they can get... Uh, similar or better rasterized performance in a card that's often a bit cheaper. That seems to be the case for a while. Um, the problem with a like you know AMD from a uh, what I generally think people want is that a lot of people get very upsold on ray tracing and stuff, and uh, it is sort of in that period of like, well, if you're spending like thirteen hundred bucks on a graphics card, um, you know why buy the one that can't do the NVIDIA specific features. I know that seems like, you know, oh, you know, but you're buying into vendor exclusivity, but, you know, I, I think people are just like that, I guess. And uh, you can't exactly stop, well, I mean, I mean, the interest is there. And honestly, like, hey, there is a certain, there is a certain degree of value if you want to view it like that. Um, of course, if you don't need the vendor exclusive stuff, who cares? One half of the fax has been collected. One half. Oh my gosh. This is a cone. It's like a pyramid, but uh, not. So you got to do the, the classic roll it. This one's probably harder to roll because getting it quite right off the top is just painful. You think he could have like folded the base as well? Maybe not on the cone. It's got these weird little rings as well. These are pretty cool though. He's slapping on the other side. There you go. But that's already a half of them, and we are an hour nine into the stream. And then he just dies immediately. Help! Gravity is being turned off in the science lab while spacecraft modules are being tested. Part of the unfinished plan for the next module is shown on the grid. Copy this plan, but make it twice the size. A start has been made for you. Click on a dot and drag the line to where you want it to end. If you make a mistake, re-click on the line to make it disappear. When you have doubled the scale, click on the test button. If it is completed correctly, a line of symmetry will flash. Reflect the plan exactly on the other side of the line of symmetry. Click on the test button when you have finished. If you are correct, the net of the spacecraft module will fold up into a 3D object. Examine this object from different angles 
by clicking and dragging it around. Click on the next button when you're ready for the next shape. This one's probably one of the better games, uh, but it is also the most prone to break, so you're going to see me draw these lines like one at a time, because if you drew like one long one, knowing exactly where it needs to end up, uh, it starts getting into this weird kind of period where lines keep telling you they're wrong, but they're, they are right, and then you can't get rid of them because they were right, or sometimes you just got a double like phantom line that just keeps pretending it's there. So I'm being a bit careful on this one. You can see me do like this, for example, and then hopefully it doesn't tell me I'm wrong. Okay, no, we're all good. Uh, also, play with the module. It looks fine until you try to click and grab it, and then your processor speed goes, ooh. I think the game, this game runs on Pentiums. Uh, my processor is running at 5.8 gigahertz. I think that's the problem. So, you're gonna have to bear with that one. Now, double the plan. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I think people, you know, they do get upsold into the NVIDIA features. Uh, they think they're missing out because they don't have DLSS. Because, you know, whether you like it or not, DLSS is indeed a better looking thing than FSR. The question is whether you actually use it. And to me, most of the time, no. I did use it when I played the Avengers. I thought it was like fine there. Play with the Look at that, it's another prism. But sure, okay. You know, for fa for Flash getting those like 3D things, it's like pretty neat though, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, I'd say this one's one of the better ones. You know, getting you to think about like, uh, scale and, uh, you know, a, a rotation around, uh, around an axis. It's like, that's pretty neat. Unfortunately, it sort of ends way too quickly. Because, like, it's just three rounds and then we're done with this one. So, hmm. That pyramid looks a lot flatter than maybe was before. That's enough spacecraft parts, thank you. I'm turning on the gravity. <laughs> I'm not here for the friendship. I am here for the spaceship. Okay, sure. Even twentieth of the wax has been collected. Uh, I think this. One, where is it? It's just a rectangle. It's just a rectangle. Doesn't even work. Do you know where Scuttlebutt is? That's where I was born. What are you doing here? What does it look like? I'm increasing the heat radiation through these longitudinal snagulars. Okay, sure. Uh, this floor's only got two games, so... Sure, okay. Uh, plus feeding, yes. Have you seen this before? <laughs> We're almost done with having to do this one, I tell ya. Um, but yeah, so 450, uh, comparing it against the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte makes it look like it's a much better card, the, uh, 7700 XT. Um, and I guess probably to some extent it is. It is a 12 gigabyte card, I should also pre-warn. The other one is a 16 gigabyte card. Cool. Okay. Uh, but at the end of the day, like, I don't know, I'm one where, like, I'm one to say, mm, the VRAM isn't as detrimental as people will say Scrunch it comes up and, and there is some scenarios where we yes a game legitimately up. looks and runs well on the amd hardware that probably performs about the same otherwise uh but since it's uh you know on the on the nvidia card you gotta turn down a setting purely because of the vram it comes up a couple of times i don't know if it's enough to score the card down that hard and i know i've talked about the vram thing enough but at the end of the day at least you can just say well you know one's got hey you've already said this joke just tell me numbers you've said that joke already can't believe it fourth floor artist studio and library and library 
Vince and Van Goff. Is it Goff or Go? Here, here in Australia, it's always Goff. Quiet now. She's snoozing. If you ask me, it's a boring show. Watching snow. Yes, dreams are much better. Most humans are pretty smart, especially the little ones. Right, number three? Oh yeah, I don't know why we shrunk as well. Uh, uh, I don't know. This is the mini game, by the way. If your if your monitor refresh rate is on the wrong thing, this one takes forever. Each beast makes mongrel music from munching on scuttlebird coins to enjoy the sweet beat of the juke beast. Feed it coins here. Hey, the amount you need to put on the tongue is shown here. Each spot is for one coin. You need to fill all the empty spots. When you're sure you fed Juke Beast the correct amount of money, click the on button. If you take too long, the coins will scupper. To get more coins, <laughs> click on me. Ew. Coins can be exchanged by dragging a coin or coins in my mouth and clicking. I change them into other coins. Click on the notes to turn parts of the Juke Beast off and on. Click here to synchronize the sounds. Click on this number to take you to the next level. They don't particularly explain what's going on in this one that much, but basically you've got to- you have to put two coin- wow, that is real slow. Maybe my frame rate thing isn't kicking in, who knows? I swear it is. Okay, you're gonna have to <laughs> relish in how darn slow these coins are, because I swear they move faster, but basically you gotta put two coins on. And they gotta add up to that number. Then you're gonna say- yeah, wow, this game is gonna take absolutely forever. Because, yeah, these things, when they're f flying across the screen and when they're walking away, they usually, uh, usually go a bit quicker. Who knows? Yeah, no, I totally did set my screen uh, refresh rate to 60 though, so... This game just decided to have a moment. It's only this game, but yeah, no, it's crazy slow. Uh, also, you are going to hear this jam, uh, and it's going to be crazy out of sequence. And yep, no, it's it's just going to keep going. So, listen, I'll, I'll explain uh, more about the card. So yeah, a $450 card that claims that it's probably around 25% better than an RTX... Uh, 4060 Ti is 16 gigabyte. Now, it's got less VRAM, and AMD are quick to ignore that it's got less VRAM. Uh, if people are gonna say VRAM is everything, you think the 16 gigabyte card, you know, would probably be the best, right? Uh, obviously it's not the best, and it's because, you know, just having more memory capacity doesn't necessarily mean your games run any faster than what they are. That's like saying, oh, my games run faster when I have 20 terabytes of free space left on my computer. It's like, no, it definitely matters when you run out of space on your computer. Or even when you're pushing the amount of space on your computer, it can be a little bit of a, a little bit of a problem. But it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, anything there. Uh, that being said, yeah, I, I don't think a 12 gigabyte card is a problem. So, listen, I, I think, hey, if AMD is using it to save a bit of money, that makes sense. And sure, go for them. And... The 16 gigabyte 4060 Ti is absurd. Uh, on top of that, the, the 16 gigabyte 4060 Ti costs too much for like what it even is, anyways. It's a woefully overpriced card. So when AMD is saying this card is like that much better at 50 US dollars less, I'm then going, hmm, but what about the other 4060 Ti? Because almost all the games run the same on the other 4060 Ti, and at that point, I don't know, the 20, like, the 20% difference, it's a lot less meaningful. It's probably still going to be a little bit better, mind you. Um, also, excuse me, there's six coin bits and you want to add up to 30? 
I hope you're digging this song, by the way. This is what I mean by, like, this one just takes forever. Watching these coins go out so slowly. Oh. So let's save the fives, and then we want to convert these ten cents into something a bit more worthwhile. But yeah, like, again, I can see the, you know, the math stuff going on here. Converting currency is always... Yep, I get it. Converting coins is a natural part of uh, contemporary maths, so... And uh, these are definitely Australian coins, because uh, we had phased out the one and two cent coins a while ago. So once it's all good, uh, all the sounds are going out of sync, so you sync it. And it suddenly makes a little more sense, but sure, okay. There are three levels of this, and you're just going to sit through all three levels. Uh, but the jam is a bit different each time, so sure, but yeah, no, nah, this one is gonna go on for a bit. Okay, what are we gonna need? A bunch of... bunch of tens, basically. Yeah. Uh, the other card being $500 and being $100 less than the 4070 is a fair thing. It makes the case of how much more VRAM it's got, even though... We're losing money. Well, you can make the case that, like, maybe 12 gigs is a bit too low, um... But, I don't know, I, I don't think it will particularly be a problem, and this is me on a 4070Ti saying it hasn't been a problem yet. It's been... you can spot some games where it's definitely concerning, but you've also got it in, um... Like, the, the settings that don't matter. You know, things like texture pool size, it's like the memory speed. If it's fast enough and your disc is fast enough, you don't need as much VRAM, and some games could really do with not forcing you into that much. Again, we've, I've made this discussion ages ago, so uh, let's go back on that one. Um, my main concern is that uh, even though I just compared these to the brand new AMD graphics cards, the previous generation AMD graphics cards, when they're still in stock, are fairly good things to still own. Uh, that is 35, so I'm gonna need a 20, and then I'm just gonna need to, like, get another 20, right? Oh, sorry, that's not... F yeah, this is 25, that'd be 45, so yeah, I need another 20. We're losing money. I get it, I get it. I hate that they gotta interrupt you for that as well. Dang it, purple eggplant coin purse with eyes. This creepy face on the wall. What even is this machine? Like, it's sort of trying to be like music keys, but also they're going up and down. We've got like a heart bit over here, just two sets of bongos for legs. Because that's how that works, apparently. Uh, probably gonna need a bunch of tens, and... I think I need two twenties and a five, actually. Let's get the twenties on, and then swap this. We're losing money here. I get it, I get it. I get it. Uh... So, yeah, compared to AMD's previous cards, uh, when the market was maybe a bit more, you know, a bit less, like, everyone was buying out graphics cards just to get into the AI craze, and even then, I'm still under the impression of how many people are buying AMD cards to do some AI stuff. I can imagine some things work better, some things maybe not as much, I don't know, but definitely, if I didn't know any better, I'd lean towards the NVIDIA cards. Um, I don't know, just, it seems more their forte, they advertise it a lot. Also, Rock M is for Windows, at least. Sorry, not for. Sorry, Rock M is not on Windows still. Uh, let's just get a bunch of tens. Actually, well, this is already forty, so.
Get in there. Gosh, this one is a long one, ain't it? This it takes so long, like, I'm not even clicking anything, it's just naturally gonna do the next level anyways. Uh, but yeah, AMD competing against their previous gen cards is definitely gonna be the big hurdle, because what do these new cards have to offer that the old ones didn't? The answer is not really much. Uh, and that's fine if the cards are a bit more efficient, you know, more reliable, uh, more available. Um, I don't really know what I'm saying with more reliable, because I think the 6,000 cards were pretty good. And I actually, I really did enjoy AMD finally having a full stack of cards, really competing with NVIDIA's top end, even if it wasn't, you know, quite the flagship, um, that the 3090 and the 3090 Ti was when they did the refresh. It's real darn close, and being really darn close is pretty good. Especially when the prices got very competitive here in Australia, like the, the 6950XT going for less than $100, sorry, $1,000 here in Australia. That's pretty good, that's really good. Problem when the next gen cards came out is, you're competing against that card that's $1,000. I don't know if I would listen to this song on repeat or not. Probably not. One last level. <laughs> Finally leave this one. None of the other games, you know, particularly complain about being too slow or not. It's just this one, really. So I gained some higher numbers, but you'll never put a dollar on because it never really asks that much. Uh... Pop a 20... Let's see if I can just balance all these fives. Uh, that'll be 30, so I need a 50 and a 20. Unfortunately, our 50 cent coins don't look like this, because they're, they're actually, um... Dodecagonal. I've got 12 sides to them. Tommy. Oh, I get it, I get it, I get it. Uh, wait, so if I've got... 80 already, I actually need two tens, don't I? Or I could have done, um... Yeah, no, two tens, yeah. Where are oh my god, I get it, I get it, jeez. Uh... So, what is with, uh, FSR 3? It's interesting that they're going with... I mean, I, mean, I know NVIDIA sort of did call the version numbers of DLSS also brings along a new feature. So a, a DLSS 3 library contains the DLSS 3 model, except it can do the super resolution, um, you know, with different uh, parameter weights compared to FSR 2, for example. So uh, I think the best thing is games should always have the newest version of DLSS uh, when they support it. Um, and then games should... Uh, Ah, uh, I can't use the fives. I think I just need like a 50 and then a 20 and a 10. So 50. I forgot three coins. I get it, I get it. I'm trying to drag this one, bro. Oh, this is a jam and a half. And he's taken the long route to getting out of here. Um, so, ray reconstruction is part of what they refer to DLSS 3.5, but I think the best thing to do is to refer to the individual uh, DLSS technologies. You've got regular DLSS um, super resolution, which has improvements with the DLSS 2 version of it, which is important to note, I guess. Uh, DLSS 3 introduces a frame generation feature, and then DLSS 3.5 introduces... Um, I basically just need like a bunch of 20s. That's really all I can say here. Uh, DLSS 3.5 introduces ray reconstruction. M similarly, FSR is going in with, um, oh, actually, wait, hold on, that's, 
Yeah, uh... Oh, I could actually do this, can't I? Because I need another 60, so I could do just this. There we go. Which drum is creating this sound? There is... There is some kind of ride in some kind. Like a symbol. It isn't four, but there's like five bars. That's, that's what gives it that weird, funky offbeat. Yeah. Uh, so similarly, FSR is doing the same thing, where FSR two uh, effectively implemented the uh, the same uh, motion vectors method of uh, improving the uh, the super resolution part. Uh, and then the, uh, FSR three is introducing a frame generation uh, technology. Uh, they made a big point about how this works on all, at least hopefully, all DirectX 11 and 12 titles, which will be incredibly interesting. I don't know, I, I'm cautious, I worry it's not gonna look great, because there is a big reason why we needed games specific, because FSR 1, remember, was game agnostic, first of all, and it looks like butt, it really does look like butt, I don't like FSR 1. Uh, FSR 2 requires in-game implementation, but it did offer, um, you know, fairly improved visuals because it could gather information that the games uh, offered, in this case being motion vectors, knowing where pixels on screen and objects on screen were moving between frames. Um, uh, might as well... That's at 30, so I need basically like 10, 10, and 50, right? Got a ten. Oh. When you hit him without uh, any coins, he's probably just gonna—he's probably just gonna give you big ones. Listen, we're almost free. We're almost free. Uh, so yeah, I'm cautious of it when they say it, it works on every game. I hope if this solution is actually like fairly decent, I'm just checking my numbers. It's okay. The worst part is that it's probably one of the better puzzles, but it's just the implementation is so so slog, so slow. Uh, that makes this appear. Music makes the world go round and helps the wax go down. Three fifths of the wax has been collected. Oh gosh, that's only three fifths. Oh my gosh. Uh, we got a cube, or sorry, a, uh, a hexahedron. I mean, that does work as a name. Six congruent square faces. Takes a while to build a cube, doesn't it? That's the start button. There you go. Uh, there's another game here when you click on the TV and you suddenly get brainwashed. Let's make the bad guy watch out for a change. Stop Mr. Wolf's phony free time in the nick of time. Digital time is shown underneath every watch. Wait until the hands of the watch show the same time as the digital clock below, and then click on the watch to stop it. Stop each watch in the correct order. Start at the earliest time. If you miss the right time, you'll have another chance. Okay. Good evening, ladies and This one's got an intro? And tonight's show we have Mr. B. Bad Wolf. He's been warned to watch it. Your challenge tonight is to stop all Mr. B. Bad Wolf's clocks in the nick of time and send him off to do time for his crime. Hey, hey you. Want some free time? This one's probably the best game, though, out of the bunch. Uh, basically, it's, it's simple. You just got to click on the clocks uh, once, uh, they become the same time as the digital time. But you know what? It's got a, a... A time effort? That's not really a pun, but you know what I mean? It's like... Converting digital time into analog time, uh... And really kind of feeling the differences between, you know, 8.30, 9.30... Each level keeps adding more and more clocks, and you've sort of gotta... Order them in your head. You gotta figure out which one's gonna go off first. 
Also, he cries every time you click on it. Uh, but yeah, I... I'm cautious about the FSR 3. If there's one thing as well, I can't tell what things look better or worse now in YouTube videos. I think there's not enough one. I think YouTube is sort of culling the quality on me. So suddenly everything kind of looks a bit garbled and messy anyways. Uh, and then two, um, I think, uh, like, you know, the details that we're really trying to super resolution fix are pretty good in general. Like, you know, I... It, it starts to get real hard to tell just based on a YouTube video, even when it was doing a good quality. Uh, even when YouTube was outputting at a very good bit rate. Uh, now it's a bit rougher now. So I hope that, uh, you know, other sources can provide some more raw footage for people to base it on. Uh, base their opinions on, because right now, you really can't tell unless you see it in person. Um... That's sort of the favor and the detriment of these cards, is that this upscaling tech um, mostly works by- Also, excuse me, are there two that are within, like, one click? Uh, they- they were within a minute, excuse hey, me? Hey, you! Want some free time? Oh, the, you're doing it again. You- you didn't change any of the clocks. <laughs> These are within 15 minutes, so... Uh... Oh my gosh, I'm an idiot, sorry. I waited for so long and then I was like, looking at it thinking, oh, I'm at 8 o'clock already. Listen, it's that time of night. It's not even that time of night, but it is like, I am just like, generally... I don't know why, I've been very on the sleepy side. I know I've said like, I've had a decent week, but it's like, man, you know, like... Could probably do with, a, with an extra sleep in. Okay, we're waiting for this one a bit more. I'm not clicking it right away. Yes, it does deduct my score, and no, I don't particularly mind, but I'm gonna have the brain age of a ten-year-old at the end. And now I gotta wait for this one all the way around. All the way around. And one last round. Is the right time. I wish I did six clocks, but sure, okay. Again, they've done this on me. Oh my gosh. I did the thing again where I saw it. I, uh, I saw the hour hand pointing at the five and went, yep, that's it. 5.55. Coming out of this one with a horrendous score. Ugh. <laughs> Okay, round and round and round it goes. I'll get there. Uh, so I guess the, the be all end all question is should you buy these graphics cards that are coming out? And I, I don't have any suspicion that they'll be bad in any way, but I worry that... You're going away for an eternity, big bad. You're nicked. This is how I talk. This one has an outro as well. It has a mild epilogue. Disregard my horrendous scores. I, I wolfed that one down, eh? But there's no law against that. Uh, this one is a trapezium, or as in Australia we'd actually call it a... Oh yeah, tra we do call it trapezium here. Yeah. The Americans call it trapezoids. I gotta sneeze to the side, sorry. Thank you for the sneeze to the side. Here's another game. Uh, ooh, where has it gone? There it is. I'm a lump of dough. Click and drag dough shapes to fill the grid. Do this five times. Next, clues appear. Now you must guess which shapes fit where on the grid. Click on a question mark for a clue. It shows you how many shapes fit in that row or column. Drag shapes into the grid to fit the clues. When you are sure you have filled the grid correctly, click the test button. You'll receive more points if you can solve it without using all the clues. Why? 
this one seems alright, because it's like you start off, right. and it makes sense, you know, like, one of these Why? fits. You know, like, mm, makes nice. sense. Uh, it starts getting a bit more freeform, but sure, oh, okay. Yes. And then, you know, you can kind of do whatever, but you sort of have to know that, like, you can like make these, like, S shapes. Then when you do the puzzle ones, okay, so if you see a one, you know it's just a column. Uh, but then it's like, which way do I go? Is this the one where there's, like, okay, so now I know it's two. You gotta click on a few of these clues in order to really know, but sometimes you get lucky and you can kind of figure it out after two clues. Like that one, it's like, okay, like, I assume what they're going for is, uh, this one? A masterpiece. Sure, okay. Now try the next puzzle. We got a one. We got a one. That's how you know. Okay, sure. What talent? Better score. Now try the next puzzle. It's a three. Okay, I'm assuming it's this one. Oh. Perfection. This one's over and done now with pretty quick though. The next puzzle. I don't mind it though. Uh, like I, I, I basically have to just like look for the row that's what a one. A work of art. Nice and easy, nice and quick though. That may have been the full score. Who knows? Well, there was something artificial about that vac. Probably the paint. Seven tenths of the vac has been collected. We got a square prism. It's like a cube, but a little longer on one side. Uh, but yeah, should you buy these graphics cards? Um, I mean, I guess it really depends on one, your budget, and then two, whether it's worth it compared to any competitors. The problem with these mid-price cards, the 4060 Ti 16GB, the 4070 some, to some extent, uh, even the 4060, given its sort of outrageous price, the problem with these cards is that they clearly have to compete against the previous generation cards. And, uh, you as a buyer shouldn't be pressured into buying the new cards, uh, you know, because the old ones work really, really well. Like, yeah, I guess you don't get DLSS frame generation, but, like, do you need it? Do you really, really need it? Who knows? Uh, if you see, you know, like, even touring cards, the RTX 2060 Super, for example, I'm like, that card is great. Don't feel pressured into, like... You know, not buying it because it's old. You should you shouldn't buy it just because it exists. But you know, weigh up the price, and you'll probably find that like a used twenty sixty super might be pretty all right. I guess you're running into the the whole is a used graphics card safe? Whole different problem. Yeah, I get it, but sure. Come on. Uh, the FSR three technology for reference uh, is limited to uh. To a uh, RDNA 1 card, so the RX 5000s and up, if you're still on an RX 580, you're not going to be able to benefit from the frame generation technology. Uh, same thing with uh, NVIDIA RTX 2000s and up. It doesn't count the 1600s, I think, maybe. Uh, and it won't count uh, GTX uh, 1000s, in one but FSR 2 did, so. Uh, it doesn't particularly support a crazy wide range of cards, like, no card can do the frame generation, uh, for, well, I guess, like, they can do the frame generation here more than, I don't know where I'm going with this one. I'm half tired. Also, they just give you a freebie here. I need a lift. This vac will help. Three quarters of the vax has been collected now. This is a zeroing. Yeah, they start giving a couple of freebies. Hi, you three. Well, hello. Welcome to our picnic party. Feel free to help yourselves, but hey, don't touch our delightfully delicate cheesecake. That's for later. Who's later? An alligator. Come on, let's explore. Did you know that three cuts through a pizza can create not six, but up to seven pieces? Yes, I did. And a seventh piece would be a rather strange shape. It takes one to know one. That, that is a real thing, I guess. It's when you miss the center. Have you ever had pizza cut like that? 
Now, I'd like to mention that, yeah, I, I, I said at the beginning, these guys made two games. They reused a lot of assets for another game called Rat Bags. I don't know anything about this other than uh, they drew rats like this guy. But I don't know if this is a this is a crossover or anything. I don't know. Help the brave Skid Scatterfin put our food back onto the plates. Move Skid with your mouse or by using the keyboard arrows. Hit the space bar to make Skid jump over any food you don't want to collect. What is the point in using the mouse if you got to hit the space bar anyways? To collect it, the fraction clues help you choose which pieces to collect. Keep Skid out of Rex's way. Rex will waste your time with a punch. Oh, by the way, you'll get more points if you beat the clock. This sounds like a decent puzzle, but the the problem with it is that I'm just looking for sandwich pieces. I'm not exactly looking for the, like the fractions, and even though he is going to waste my time, it's just uh, you just walk right past him. Who cares? Even the bad pieces will waste your time, but, like, sure, you know, you've got plenty of time on this one. That's no problem. So as long as you're just not picking up pizza, you know, you're in the zone, you're getting it. And it's the same maze every level, so it's not that big and you'll probably understand it quite well. But there is like a dead end over here and sometimes he does, they do put a thing down there and you're like, oh darn. I don't know, this one's probably over and done with quick, but it's... Three minutes to earn maximum points. It's at least not annoying, I guess? Like it's over and done with pretty quick. In fact, actually, we're nearly at the end of the game anyways. You saw that like, you know, we're already at three quarters of the Vax. Uh, there's, yeah, there's three puzzles on this floor, and then there's one extra one afterwards, and then we're done. So I guess as a retrospective, like, is this game worth it? Uh, sort of. It definitely holds a nostalgic place. Uh, I don't know if I would actively, you know, tell kids, hey, yeah, you'd know, you'd learn so much maths by doing this, but it does get you thinking about, like, certain maths problems from at least a different perspective. I don't know if you'd be thinking about maths when it comes to this puzzle, though, but Amazing sure. Amazing cleanup, Shorty, but the back is covered in cheesecake and cream. You'd better stash it before Loopy Sir Comfala beats it. Oh, I, I, I will take care of it. All part of a hard night's work. For a piece of the so that was uh, an octagon. Whoa! All my homies love octagons. Uh, yeah, there's just one thing there you just got to know that you got to feed him yet again do it one more time even though you don't have to go anywhere else you know you don't have to use that lift anymore so we're done with the uh with the the pattern and the zappy dude we're done with that puzzle but we still got to do this one one more time because they just wanted to give you one more puzzle with the well one more vac I will just safely say, I wish you didn't have to do this game this many times. I wish there were some uh, much more straightforward ones, or arguably some are a bit more fun. Some of these are a bit like, yeah, okay, it takes time and I get it, sure. I don't know, maybe that's me with an adult perspective or a non-2003 perspective this time, especially because, you know, I never saw this part as a kid. Do you like my epic vac action? 1720s of the facts have been collected. Look, it's a hexagon. Whoa! Alright, three more backs. Oh my gosh. Uh. <laughs> Where are the bugs? They buzzed off. You just have to know that you click on this. We got Jar Wars. We make perfume by catching bugs. There is room for three bugs in the jar. One bug is safe, but one or two others have escaped to join the swarm. The tag tells join you the, the swarm. number of spots join the swarm. you need in the jar. Click in front of the bug you want to catch. 
I'll follow what you do and shoot out my sticky tongue. Okay, you've got me. Oh. If you think you have made a mistake, click on the bug in the jar and it will fly out. Have another go. Okay. I'll bug off then. This one's alright, but you do have to keep your wits about you to somehow, like, spot... I mean... You know, the spots are okay. Oh my gosh. Except when they start to fly off like that. La Fong de Scatla. A spell to take the breath away. But yeah, you're basically looking for two more bugs that will add up to the number of spots and legs. It seems very straightforward at first. Uh, although I'm keeping my eyes out, like, which two add up to... I think there's two with two legs here. Holy toilette. Just like roses in full bloom. I guess this may be one of the better ones because it's not that aggravating, but... Okay, so we got seven spots. We've got to find 11 spots somewhere. Well, there's a six and a five, so let's just go for that one, but... Calvin decline. You can't say no to a whiff of this. He's a punzer I don't think kids will get. Also, Calvin Klein is not a perfume brand, but sure. This is when it starts getting kind of dicey. This guy's got four legs and one spot, so you want to make sure that you get... The oh, I got one spot there, and then there's a uh, two spots, one leg. There's just a specific nice combo that does the job. Through the ages. But there's only five stages, and it's not too rough. Other than trying to count the number of legs while it's jittering like this, I need one leg and two two, two spots. Oh, dementia! Oh, I didn't even get the zero Put one. Did we're nose. okay with that one? There's, there's this bug that's zero spots and zero legs, and apparently I didn't even need it. Okay. Good one! We now have a fresh supply of perfume to fight against Aunt Dementia's gas leaks. Well, I smell a smell, and it's getting thicker the higher we get. That's because hot air rises, and we're just below Aunt Dementia's apartment. Suck this boy in. I don't appreciate that part dropping topping. Mm. Nine tenths of the fax has been collected. So it was these, uh, the hair, which, uh, is not rendering. You're gonna have to use your imagination on this one. I assume it's the exact same as the other one. But, yeah, rip rendering that one. Uh, let's go over here. Uh, <laughs> I'd better use some soap on my arm pits. Do you know how long it takes light to travel from the moon to the Earth? One and a half seconds? What holds the moon up in the sky? Moon beams! Ah. See, if I was a kid, I wouldn't know which one of those sentences was real. <laughs> Before computers was television. Before television was radio. Before radio, they only had these games. Yes, they had nothing else to do. So they called them... Oh, board games. <laughs> I really want to not hear that one again. <laughs> and, uh, actual jump scare by this thing. This is, uh, an actual just game. Click a scuttler it's not really any start. maths in this one. Now select the square where you want the scuttler to jump with a click of your mouse. It has to jump over a scuttler and land in an empty square. You can move your scuttler left, right, backwards, and forwards. If you can continue to jump your scuttler over others, click on the next empty squares. If you want to change where your scuttler jumps, re-click on the last square to cancel it. When you've finished your turn, click the move lever to watch the action. You earn one point for each jump. Blue and pink scuttlers are worth more. We'll play against you, and then you can play against a friend. You go first. The winner goes first each game after that. If we tie, it's random who goes first. The last player to make a move has their score rounded up to the nearest five, and then the other player has their score rounded down. Yeah, so uh, it's decently straightforward, but yeah, basically you're trying to look for, uh, like, you know, patterns like this. Have you played this before? How you don't really get combo points, but it's just the idea of being able to do multiple of these in one go uh, is probably the best route. 
Uh, I'm probably going to do terribly. So we'll just kind of do a couple like that. Uh, I feel like this AI does the best job all the time, and there's nothing you can particularly do about it as well. Um, when they say blue and pink are worth more, you're seeing I'm getting four points for each time I bounce. Uh, the blue ones give you five and the pink ones give you six, so they don't give you a crazy amount more. There's no point to really diving for those ones. Uh, but yeah, sometimes you get into scenarios like this where it's like, yeah... You know, I'm just gonna like split them up like that. Um, move them around. Uh, it doesn't matter as well if you lose. Like, there's no particular failure state with this. Losing just means, I guess, you'll probably have fewer points. We can plan more than one move ahead. Can you? I was, bro. You're a terrific opponent. But apparently, I won. Unfortunately, you got to do five levels of this, and I don't know. Like, it's it's very. The layout's pretty random in the end, like, I don't really know, like, if these like are planned style, or anything, but sure, but also, what? The worst part is I could have capitalized on that one, and I didn't, so, I'm an idiot. There we go. Children's video game is beating me. Or is it? Good move. Beat this move, if you dare. I don't know why they're suddenly challenging me to a game as well, out of nowhere. Do you remember what I said earlier? You know, we're collecting the Vax and trying to restore everything by... by dawn. We've sort of very forgotten about that, and uh... Yeah, uh, let's just say the end of the game, it forgets about that as well, so... Uh, yeah, overall... I don't know, like, rewarding the player with an actual game is, like, fine. And this game's actually alright, like, I feel like kids would play this. Uh... It's a fairly straightforward game, and I... I feel I like this reminds me of something else. There's probably some other game that's... that is just this, but... Hey, you know what? It's done alright. Trying to give me a freebie there. Nice, thanks. Good tie. Thank you. Hey, right, three more rounds. Here we go. You're watching talent at work. Uh, do I see any other weird ones that jump out at me? This one, maybe. Wow. That was a clever move. Uh, any other cool, smart ones? Not really. Sort of see like that, but... I taught me oh, well. everything I know. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. I left the door wide open. Uh, oh, I mentioned F1. The race was really good, the Dutch Grand Prix. Uh, would recommend. It's definitely one of the better ones of the season. I think it's very hard to say which race is the best, uh, you know, as it happens, but certainly, you know, we've been a bit starved of F1 during that, uh, that holiday break, and I'm glad they've come back, uh, decently swinging. Uh, lots of drama, uh, very sad for Danny Rick to break his hand. I hope he gets better on that one. I hope he's, uh, it'd be kind of miraculous if it's good enough for, uh, uh, Monza next week, or this weekend coming up, um, but, uh, there's a week break after that. And, uh, I shouldn't be saying the word break so much, so many times, but, um... Beat this move, if you dare! Oh my gosh. Uh... You went the wrong way, bro. I can see you're going to be hard to beat! Okay, sure. Um... Yeah. It's not, like, gratuitous. It wasn't gratuitous. Gratuitous? Is that the term? It wasn't, a uh, graphic, uh, on, you know, on live TV seeing him break his hand. It was within a glove, and, uh, you, you couldn't see anything that bad, but definitely you could tell he was holding it because it was, like, crazy sore. Um, 
And yeah, like that kind of that really sucks, you know, getting injured like Have that. You this uh, but uh, yeah, they had Liam Lawson of uh, Super Formula fame uh, sub in, and I thought he's been doing a very good job in Super Formula, and uh, he he did a great job. He was really like picking fights. I think there was one part where he unlapped himself from Max and kind of fought for a couple of uh, corners, which I thought was real good fun. Uh, You're very good. Beautiful to watch. Oh my gosh, every time I feel like I've got one, he's got one just as long. Or they. Multiple people. You know? Uh, but yeah, the, uh, the weather, you know, always big drama with the weather. There's a bit of a weird thing going on in F1 right now where, uh, the, what, 13 races in? And all but three of them have rained at some point in the weekend, which has been very bizarre. I don't recall it ever happening like that much. Maybe like a third of the time, but right now it's like 70-something percent of the time. It's like insane number. Um, hopefully Europe sorts out its rain problem. So much rain. You'll win if you keep that up! To watch. Oh, I've set him up. I've set him up. Uh, oh. He set me up. Alright, one last game here. Uh, I can definitely see a three here. I'm just trying to spot if there's like another one. I don't think there is, so I'm going to commit to the three. And then get told how much of a dumbie I am. Beautiful to watch. Oh no, I also did a three. Okay. Uh, I guess the only like problem with F1 right now is again, if you're tired of a very particular person winning all the time, uh, then they continue to keep winning. Fast and fabulous. That's how we play. Uh, and, and I guess that's a problem with maybe any sport, is that when someone is dominating, they generally don't want to break being dominating, and, uh, which is completely understandable, but, uh, then it's like... Uh, yeah, I think that's kind of how I'm gonna wow, do it. That was a clever move. But the mid-table is good fun, and it keeps going all over the place. We don't really know whether, you know, Mercedes or... Aston Martin or uh, McLaren or uh, depending on when you ask Ferrari but I think people kind of meme on Ferrari and I think they oh they they were sort of unready for the first pit stop they just, just uh, what was it um, Charles Leclerc like just came in and it was like where's the tires bro where's, where's the tires just sitting there a lot of people are ripping into them for that and uh, sort of very understandably uh, okay, I think, yeah, this is the good setup. Heck yeah. That move ruled. I mean, it was a good setup in the reverse, but not as good as mine. Ma ha 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 ha. And now we're starting to get into like the table scraps part. We can plan more than one move ahead. Ooh, can you? Ooh. They're taunting me. They're saying I can't plan moves ahead. I think that's it. Yeah. Look at that. Clean sweep. Oh, I think yeah, I tied one of them. I did tie one of them. Still. That was fun and useful. It don't this render. Back for evacuate. Round it up! Yeehaw! Okay, sure. It's only a little one, but all vax are equal. 1920s Aussie vax has been collected. Sorry, this one. A sec oh, this one also doesn't render. Given that it's reacting somewhat to my mouse, I don't know what's going on here. But it never worked. I've never been able to get some of these to work, so... Uh, now you might be tempted to click on that thing, but yeah, on the on the vent to go to the lift, but the lift doesn't go up. Uh, first of all, uh, jump scare warning. 
It's loud as well. It gets me every time. I'm like, why? Uh, now, this is the part that confused me, is that when you were in here, they mentioned Aunt Dementia's above. And they mentioned that. But if you click on the hole, there's no thing to click. You're clicking around. Hey, Polly. Polly, put the kettle on. You're trying to find, like, what's the part? What's the part that you click on? Oh, I've gone to the previous scene. Like, I click on this guy. Okay, nothing. You click on this vase. This urn, rather. Don't we have enough facts now? We can stuff stuff in to cover any remaining holes in Evacuate. Are you serious? It's all or nothing. Now give me a break. Your arm or your leg? I am not amused. Now, this... Confused me, <laughs> like, when I was trying to, like, understand this game last week. Because, again, no one has played this game. There's no report of anyone even owning this. So, I'm going in completely blind. Uh, and, unfortunately, I don't understand compiled Adobe presentation Flash stuff. So, uh, you're going to have excuse me when it's like, I'm just clicking around not knowing what's going on. But when you have specifically 19, even though they said it's all or nothing... You, you're supposed to click on this, just the top, just the top of this genie bit. You see, my mouse is like, sort of not highlighting it at various bits, and confusingly, you might hit the arrow as well. But you click on this. I simply spray a little magic on the monkey, and the rest, just you watch. This seems completely random and unrelated, but trust me, it just magically is it's what you need struggle, to do. But now at last, a free ride. Tell me. How long will it take to get up to Great Aunt Dementia's apartment? About as long as a piece of string! <laughs> We've nearly made it, with just one last fact to find. But I'm worried. It seems a little too easy. There's probably a catch. And, hey, then, they, and then they get Over killed. Here. Oh, be nice, Arby. Excuse me. Get stuffed. How rude. We are stuffed. Panic! It's the only solution! Wait! Calm down, Abby. We're standing here right in the there. floorboards. Keep still or we'll lose our heads too. That's an idea. Uh, but let's just lose your head. <laughs> but wait, stop. You need me and I need you. There are good times to share a head. But we don't share a head. Well, Abby, look. How do you feel deep inside? Wow. Soft. I'm a softie at heart. Oh, sorry, Obi. Okay, but we need repairs fast. Stitch switch. Only hope. Please find the stitch switch. I feel like they wrote this stuff and then didn't quite have a plan on how to make it difficult. After the stitch switch, the last vec will be here. If you give me a hand, then all I need is a second hand shop. Oh my gosh, what? Jeez. A lovely castle you have. Well, yeah, it's it's literally like... Mm -hmm. The Stitch Witch. I wonder where it is. A ball of wool. Drag it to the empty bubble at the top. This is reserved for a woolly mammoth. You only need one ball for the Stitch Witch. There is a space in the Stitch Witch for a ball of wool. Can, can you tell what they want you to do? So here we go, the last, the last of the okay. games. A few tips for the Stitch Witch. Firstly, use the mouse to grab a moving puzzle piece. Drag it over to the matching outline on our body. It won't stay if it's in the wrong position, so try again. Sometimes the piece stays there but needs more adjusting. The spiders, flip and turn, will drop down to help. Choose which spider you need. When clicked, flip will flip the piece over like a pancake. Turn will rotate the piece one quarter turn in a clockwise direction. You may need to click on turn more than once to get the piece around. The show me button will move a piece into place for you. It works three times for each outfit. Just drag and click the pieces until they somersault and cartwheel into place. There's knitting to it. <laughs> Think before you move. It's quicker. I know you can do it. So this is a, it's a geometry kind of puzzle, basically. You got all these different kinds of shapes. Look! A whole suitcase of patterns! Ready? 
Let's make like a wrapper and pack it. And uh, yeah, it's your goal to click on them, move them in the right place. And uh, if it looks like it could be in the right place, oops. I'm supposed to flip it, turn it, you know, that kind of stuff. It's not really a, a huge failure state, it's just keep working at it. Keep trying to figure out which ones fit where. You should be good in the end. Uh, but you do have to do five stages of it, so it goes on for a bit. I mean, overall though, it's pretty alright. It's got enough dialogue, I think. It'll keep a kid interested. Um, the only thing I wish is that it's, you know, a bit of, bit of like QA, although I didn't actually run into a horrendous bug this time around, so that's alright. Clean underwear for a change. <laughs> And then, yeah, you just gotta pack up, do five, five more. This one is kind of annoying to know that you've got the right hand. Some of these uh, get kind of, you know, kind of close. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know, like, in, in hindsight, yeah, it seems alright. I can't complain too much about this. This is an educational game for kids. Uh, I'm obviously past the, uh, the target demographic on this one. And as much as I'm kind of ripping into it for... Being a little, you know, poorly implemented in places. You know what, like, every game for the most part has maths. There's something maths everywhere. And you know what, I'd say that's sort of admirable that they've at least tried and sort of succeeded. Um, I still don't know why it's on the US Securities uh, Commission, you know, website. I swear, that's a real, it's a real link. You can find it. Uh, this one gets kind of annoying once the, uh, you know, as the patterns get more involved. And especially, you see it's, like, just sliding so much quicker. They'll loop around, there's no, like, problem, but it's like, oh, like, I'm trying to click on it, and it's just going, it's going way too fast. Uh, I would definitely say yes. Can they uh, get an installer working on this game, though? I'm curious. I don't know what's going on with the company. Uh, what is it called? Did I say Ed Alive? Is it? That's not the same company as the last one. That's Bag and the Dragon, right? Was it? It'll blow my mind. Maybe that explains why I got both of them. They were just in the same place. Seems that the ones you flip are... Only flip. Yeah. But yeah, no, I don't know. Overall, I think this is an interesting... At least, it's it's something. Um, and definitely, you know, I'm amazed it's sort of disappeared off the internet. Because... I don't know, like, I guess... Oh, I actually, I, I've got one critique. Uh, the physical box, the name on the side of the DVD case. A or it's a CD case. Bit, but I wanted a gorilla suit. It is a CD, but it's in a big, like, taller DVD case. Uh, the name of the game on the side is uh, upside down. It doesn't go the same direction as uh, every other game in existence, so... Rip them, that's probably the reason why no one bought it. <laughs> nah, but, yeah, legit, like... I am curious. I am very curious about the story of this game. Like, why did it exist? How did they pitch it? How did they really develop it? Um, like, you know, did they have any, like, post-mortems on, like, w w with the sales or anything like that? There's probably a whole kind of story on the... Pretty much all these educational games that I've played. Um, and FIFA 98 as well, <laughs> while we're at it. Uh, but those are games where it's like, none of these games, you know... They only hold an impact mostly for nostalgic purposes. And I guess that's the kind of thing that connects us all together, is that this is my nostalgia, this is my, like, things that I interacted with at a young- at a younger age. Even if it wasn't necessarily stuff that, like, really left an impact. If- did I just say the same thing? I said this is my childhood, this is my nostalgia, but I- they didn't leave an impact. Point is, is that, like, you know, I think everyone gets into games, and gets into things their own way. These are not the only games I ever played as a kid, mind you. Nice pajamas, with instructions on the front! But it's definitely one thing I played. And at- oh my gosh, how fast is that going? Um, and definitely at the end of the day, it's like, well, this is something that 
I used to shape what I was interested in, whether it was, uh, you know, whether I did like these educational games. I still think that there is some merit. There are some educational games that have something involved with them in some way. I'm, I'm generally a lot more tolerant to playing things that are a bit like, uh, more bland or straightforward. Uh, I don't know if I'd necessarily play only them, uh, but definitely like, I'm willing to play a game like this just because it's like, hey, you know, they made something. And that something is, you know, it's neat. It's got stuff in it. They intended for kids to, to play it and it's, you know, there's some learning all over the place in it. And some real terrible puns. They had to design characters that are just like, yeah, it only exists in this and never again anywhere else, you know what I mean? This was someone's baby for a year or something. I'm not saying that, like, all things deserve to be saved, mind you, but just, you know. Hey, you know, let's, let's, let's document some part of history. Let's, let's make sure that, you know, future generations are aware of a game, a quaint game called Evacuate. Look at that Nebraska-shaped piece. Uh, again, I would just like to remind you what the plot was. We were collecting all the vax before dawn. Oh my gosh, I've left the tiniest piece until last. Wow, a spacesuit! Ready for space travel! We could explore between your ears, LB! Great job! Thanks! Okay. And, uh, yeah, that's the end of the last game. The last vac for the spacecraft evacuate is still lost. We have an intergalactic disaster on our hands. Search the area. I wonder where it is. Oh, mon dieu. That one didn't test very good. Make sure you have the vac information you need for your model evacuate. Print out any vacs that you don't have. This is your last chance. You must do it now. Once I leave here, there is no coming back. Which is weird, because when you're done with the game, you can actually just still open up this menu. But it is just this, which, again, it's not rendering. Rip. But it's the little cone at the end of, end of the thing. Very nice. Uh, I like this mechanic. This is this is fun. Even though, technically, you don't need to do any of it in order to play the game at all. But, I don't know, getting kids to print out stuff and fold things and make cool paper shapes. That's a fun little bonus. I feel like games should really utilize extra features like that. There's a game uh, called... Uh, Mightier. It claims it's a demo on Steam, but it's like a, it's like an indie, um, like a university project. And basically the way that the game works is that you, uh, draw on a piece of paper and then you show the, the drawing of the piece of paper on a camera and it'll, uh, it'll figure out your drawings and then form mountains out of it. And you use those mountains to solve puzzles. It's a neat idea. That's all of them. We did it. You could just use your mouse, but where's the fun in that? For any last minute fun, I'll wait here. Oh, no, uh, on second thoughts, I'll come too. There's not much last minute fun when you have to when you have to solve a puzzle in order to go between floors. And again, other than seeing just random gags show up from time to time, there's not really much going on. So, like it's just like that. Also, we wet, wait. <laughs> We were up until 6 a.m. Woo! The galaxy awaits me. My destiny has arrived. And there he's. There he goes. Ready? Let's go take a look. After me? No, after you. Yes, that's correct. Well, after us. I thought you were going to No, this place. This place looks familiar. So anyway, click on this and you're done with the whole game. We're running late. Put TikTok on to evacuate. Right now wouldn't be too soon. It's kinda of weird, you can see the rectangle where the video file is. So uh 
Pop him I on. hope he functions okay. We'll just have to risk it. Ah, he's in CG land now. You've grown. I won't be able to fit you in. He's got the same voice as that one, like, gatekeeper from Harvester. He talks exclusively through telepathy. Also, is this not terrifying? The return to Scuttlebutt is back on schedule, thanks to your effort. Hey, what was that? Uh, my boarding pass? Abby, that was. <laughs> Just but I want to get a good spot. So take a look at your bub. Darlings, farewell. I'll miss you all. Take care and stick together. There's safety in numbers, you know. That's why we're so attached. Boy of the Mansion! Yeah, I'm, I'd still be terrified. So... Did they ever explain why this random stuff nice though you had seats. one came to life, two yes, is the pilot? pilot Take me to your lever. No worries, this looks like acceleration. It must be dual purpose. They had to <laughs> had to have one more fart joke. We're blasting off into a new adventure. Uh, wait me for it, Abby. Certainly, Abby. Mm. Uh, I hope it's fine. Yes, we'll pull those covers up. Cheerio! Don't forget to email. Oh, her hand just flicked out. Also, oh, you got advertised right at the end. And, ew. But that's it, that's, that's the game. You're then shown this screen. You can see the screen anywhere if you wanted to just quickly play any particular mini game. Uh, but other than that, you can print a certificate saying how silly or smart do you feel right now? And you get a score and a date. All this stuff. Look at this. I am. I can print this out. I can put this on my wall. You were, f you were utterly fooled into thinking that you were playing games. Were in fact learning mathematics. Well, you got me there. But yeah, you can... You can print the pieces still. You don't have to wait there. So, let's sit on some credits. I don't know, just so you can see who made this. But yeah, I don't know, it's... It's okay. It's not amazing, but... It's okay. Uh, but yeah, it is It is bizarre that it's gone from history for the most part. Like, the internet doesn't know this game exists. This may be the first time anyone has ever documented what most of the game is. Uh, and that is surprising for something that's 20 years old and given how much game preservation efforts really go for on the internet. Um, so I'm very surprised that, like, yeah, you know, like, I wanted to share more and more obscure <laughs> titles from my childhood, and, uh, I don't think it will ever get more obscure than this. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the ride. Uh, you somehow forgot that the plot was about just going to bed or getting all the vax, and instead just everyone went to space and that was it? Except for you. Also, your aunt was in on it the whole time? I don't quite know. She, you think she'd get mad at you for staying up? You think there'd be any plot about you learning maths? Just sort of subtly comes over? I think there's a lot of things that could be better. Um, and made with the Macromedia Flash. That's, that's how it's done. That's how you do it back in 2003. This game runs on potatoes, so it's got that at least. Uh, but yeah, other than that, that is indeed it. Uh, there's no other... You can click on score, you can see your, your breakdown. There's definitely some games in here where, you know, I like doing time, I could probably do a better score. Uh, but, or... Which ones? Way to go could have a better score. 
I don't know if 10,000 is a theoretical maximum. Some of these look like they just sort of max out at some point anyway. Um, like, you know, Sheep Shuffle, some of these are like 500. I think... Maybe. Exit. Who knows? I'm not bothered to really find out, though. So, <laughs> uh, but anyway, with that, I would like to thank you so very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed this or you missed it, uh, missed parts of it or whatever, you know, there'll be a VOD on YouTube uh, within, you know, within 24 hours, but it's usually like 12 hours. Who knows? Um, but yeah, uh, check out the YouTube channel if you miss any other VODs. They're all over there. And uh, if you want to watch it live and you're on YouTube right now, uh, the stream's at 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. I shall reserve... Uh, I shall return to more regular programming of fuller games and games that people actually know and love uh, next week. But I hope you enjoyed this kind of indulgent look at uh, some very obscure PC games um, this whole month. And uh, yeah, if you've got any other obscure PC games or you somehow remember this one, uh, yeah, feel free. Leave comments. You know, I read them, I guess. And uh, yeah, you know. I don't want to say I take game suggestions, but if you got something that, like, you want to remind me of, just tell me about it, so. Anyway, stay safe, eat your greens, don't stay up too late, uh, and apparently, uh, do your maths problems. I don't know what's going on there. Have a good night, everyone. I'm tired as heck. See ya.